Hi guys, Michael Ingledew from TDW. Um, looking today at the top five reasons why S1000D projects can fail or become sticky or maybe uh, just hits the rocks. Now this is compiled from a list that I've uh, developed over the years working supporting S1000D projects all around the world. I've, I've been lucky enough to work in places like with some great people in South Africa and uh, Turkey all the way up through um, India all the way up through Europe all around the world. I've been very very fortunate but there are some common reasons why S1000D projects tend to need the first aid or the heart defibrillator to get them going again. Now we're going to look at the top five during this particular short uh, YouTube video but over on TDIQ our learning portal we have I think it's the top 15 reasons why S1000D projects can hit the rocks but for this particular video we're going to look at the top five and the first one is lack of understanding. Now lack of understanding when it comes to an S1000D project can be fatal and can be terminal. S1000D you've got to remember when you pick up the S1000D specification it's a technical specification it's not an implementation guide. Now if you need help implementing S1000D lots of vendors provide lots of little guides and booklets and white papers and um, help books for you to, to get going. But S1000D, when you pick it up, assumes that you understand a little bit about what's going on. There is obviously some guidance in there, but it's certainly not something that I would say to a complete layman, go and start writing S1000D, because it ain't going to happen. So understanding of the process, understanding of the investment level up front, not just in software, which we talk about in other areas, but we talk about the level of effort required to get an S1000D project off the road when you compare it to a standard project like a Microsoft Word project. On TDIQ we have a course that looks at the S1000D cost curve and it compares S1000D to a standard Microsoft Word based project and when you actually go through the cost curve and you talk to people about it it actually opens a few eyes and people actually question whether S1000D is right for them. Later on in another YouTube video we've got scheduled for a couple of weeks we look at some of the myth busters around S1000D and we'll answer some of these particular areas as well. Number two on our list bad software choice. Now when we look at software for S1000D the clue is in the title of the specification. It says utilizing a common source database. I have been into numerous organizations where they believe well we're only producing 700 data modules so we don't need a CSDB. Uh -uh. That same organization had their data rejected multiple times by their end customer because the links and references were incorrect, bad XML structures and many many more. Now, bad software selection, we talk about political reasons why S1000D projects can fail over on TDIQ, but a bad software choice because we've used it on this project or my customer's using it so we must use it can also cause problems and we, like I say, we look at that deeper in other tutorials. Lack of S1000D skills can also introduce problems. At the project level, it's easy to become baffled if you don't understand when people are talking about MI codes, DMCs, SDS, SNS, ILOCs, all these wonderful things. And then you start looking, talking about actual elements, XML elements, structures, um, can quickly get, get you lost and tied around the wheel. So if you don't have the skills, Find a partner that does have the skills, whether that's a good authoring house, um, a good senior technical author that can come in and help guide you through that. One of the big areas that really frustrates me is where you're dealing with, in a politically sensitive way, a more aging population of technical author or project manager. 
and they're unable to disconnect the old way of producing tech manuals, Word, unstructured frame maker to PDF and doing whatever they need to do from the new structured way. So going from a monolithic structure to something that is now very fragmented, which is what S1000D says you will do by its very nature, and so do other specifications like Ditter, etc. They're unable to disconnect the old way of doing things from the new way of doing things. And that causes a lot of frustration within teams. So if you've got technical authors that are used to writing and making documents look very pretty and making this point, that point, this leading, that font, and you're taking that away from them, that also frustrates them and it gets a little bit up, up their nose and they become very anti S1000D. As soon as you get somebody, as soon as you have a key player in the team who becomes S1000D anti, you are, um, you are fighting a, a losing battle. So you need to explain to your team why you do things in a certain way and that comes down to the understanding and you can explain to them why you're doing things in a certain way. Of course, number five, the, the fifth most popular reason why S1000D projects hit the rocks, I won't talk about specifics, but I can give you multiple examples, is that the upfront setup of an S1000D project, so whether that's defining your DMRL, data depth, links to other specifications, type of languages you're going to use, uh, any um, specific project business rules. Now, business rules, I'll talk again in about the myths of S1000D. I was with an organization only this week where they said to me that there are certain people that get their buzzwords and some consultants, their buzzwords are business rules. Don't get tied up about business rules. They're important, but they're not the only thing that we need to worry about when it comes to an S1000D project. And we'll talk about that in future tutorials and, and YouTube videos. But bad project setup and bad project cross-party agreements, specifically if you're working with uh, multiple partners, uh, is, is vital. And if you get that wrong, for example, I can think of one where incorrect definitions were being used. Um, when it came to merging the data at a later time in the project, that caused massive problems, rework, more cost, and uh, lots of red faces. And later on, on another tutorial, we'll talk about career changing decisions when it comes to tech data strategies, not just about S1000D, but in general, investing in software, skills, departmental costs, etc. So our top five for why S1000D projects can fail, ships can sink. Understanding, make sure that you've got good project understanding. Make sure you've got the right software. Get the right skills in your production team. Disconnect the old way from the new way. It's very important. And get that project set up right. Get it right up front. And if you can't do it, get somebody who can help you to do it because if you get it right, it will save you massive amounts of trouble later on down the line. So it just gives me time to plug our magazines. If you haven't got one yet, please do go to our website, fill out the form. We'll send you one of these complimentary. You can take a look at it or you can go over to TDIQ, have a look at some of the other tutorials that are on there that might be more interesting to you. Or indeed, if you want TDW, to come in and talk to you about your specific problems around projects or S1000D, we're more than happy to do so. Subscribe down the bottom, send us some comments, more than happy to hear from you, your suggestions on other topics. Again, I'm Michael Ingledew, and this has been an, our first TDW little top five tutorial.